In this video, I'm going to walk you through getting your machine ready for development. And in no time, you'll be building your first smart contract based app. PC, Mac OS, I got you covered. Hi, this is Steve Shell from Digital Asset. Had you told me six months ago that it was possible to build a smart contract based application or platform in just a few hours, I would have told you that you, you are crazy. Or in New York, they would say, get out of here. Or in Singapore, cannot lie. I'm going to tell you that it's possible to do it using something called DAML. In this video, I'm going to walk you through getting your machine ready for development. And in no time, you'll be building your first smart contract based app. PC, Mac OS, I got you covered. Stay tuned. Singapore. Let's get started. Regardless of whether you're on the Mac or PC, your first stop is demo.com and you're looking for download demo connect. This page shows you what you need to do. And the first thing you need to do is to download Visual Studio Code. Whether you're on a Mac or a PC, I'm going to go ahead and show you how it looks like on a Windows machine. And it should look the same for the, the Mac OS as well. And ta-da, it's done. All right, I like to pretend to be mysterious, so I'm going to go to dark theme. And let's uh, move on to the next step. Now back at our demo.com documentation, our very next step is to install the JDK, the Java Development Kit. And here we are, I'm going to accelerate through these frames so we save time. Let's accept all the default and you should be just fine. Well, not quite. Because Windows is going to need to know where to find the Java libraries that you just installed. So we do this by setting the Java home environment variable. And for those of you who do not despise the GUI, I'm going to show you the fastest way to do this. Click on the start icon and what we're looking for is view advanced system settings. Look to the bottom and click on environment variables. Click on the new button under the user variables. You'll see a variable name and value. Paste in Java underscore home and then paste in the path to your Java executable and click OK and click OK a second time and you are done. And easy, right? Now let me show you the painful way to do it. I'm kidding. All right, this is PowerShell on the left and uh, Command Prompt on the right. If Java is properly installed, you can run a Java space dash version on both the Command Prompt and the PowerShell and you should get a output like this that confirms that everything is good. The next thing you wanna do is to check for the path and see if you can see an entry pointing to where your Java libraries are installed. And this is the same one that you can find in the environment variables that we saw before. Remember that path is one environment variable and there are others like username, for example. Having the Java library show up in the path is not enough. We need to add a new environment variable called Java underscore home. Now, if you try to query for Java underscore home right now in the PowerShell or your command prompt, you are not going to find it. Here, the command prompt simply echoes what you are trying to find, telling you that it cannot find it. The reason for this is simple. It hasn't been set. Check this out. It's nowhere to be found. Setting it is easy enough. Back at the command prompts, you can run these commands to find out what the variables are. And the way to set variables, if you were to Google for the answer, is to use the set command like so. In this case, I'm setting the variable variable one to disco, or if you want something fancy, you can do that. And as you can tell, it is inserted. Fantastic. And over at the command prompt, you can do a similar way to set it. Check it out. The dinosaurs are there. Wait a minute. Something's wrong, isn't it? Where on earth are my disco and pagers? It's missing. Shouldn't it show all three variables? It gets worse. When you restart the PowerShell and Command Prompt and try to query for those variables again, guess what? Everything is gone. Disco is gone. Pages don't exist. 
dinosaurs have disappeared. Why? Because the variables in the way we set them only exist with the session. Once the session is over, it disappears. So we need a better way, a more permanent way to set those variables. And this is how we do it. So for both PowerShell and command prompts, you can use the set X variable name followed by the value. We're going to set var5 to Texas, and we're going to set var6 to tattoos. And if you check and run a query, you will see that both of them will exist. In this case, we just need to refresh prompt, run it again, and you see that it sticks. And we can confirm this with the environment variables. But let's take a look at PowerShell, make sure it's there. Yep, Texas and tattoos. They are forever and click environment variables and there they are again so now we know that it sticks and it lasts across sessions so now what we really need to do is to find a path to the jdk copy the value and then set it like we did for the texas and tattoos now to find a path in powershell you can do path just to see where it is or you can use a get command dash all java and that should give you uh, the string but there's a little problem here the ellipsis don't show you the entire string no worries just add the following to the end of the same command and you should be able to see uh, the string the entire string of where the path is pointing to java executable now over at the command prompt uh, you can simply type where java now in the event that you have multiple versions of java and you want to point to a specific one you can use a command like this in command prompt to iterate through the, all the, the executables that you may have so you can point to the right one. So back at PowerShell, you want to execute this command set x java home and then the path pointing to the executable. But before I do that, let's just make sure that we're not cheating here. This is the environment variables and you see that it's not there. And we're going to go ahead and run this command to set it. And it says that specified value is saved, was saved. Let's go back to the variable and ta-da, there it is. Likewise, for the command prompt, we do the same command. And we go ahead and execute it just like the PowerShell. And that should stick. All right, let's move on to the next step. For Windows, it cannot be simpler. Click on the installer and let it run and accept all the defaults and you should be good to go. When the demo SDK has finished installed, there is a simple way to verify if it got installed correctly. Just go to your PowerShell or your command prompt and type in demo help and that should show you an output just like this, which tells you that it has been installed. Now you can also type demo version, which will give you the latest SDK version. At, a, at this point in recording, it's 1.16. Believe it or not, that is all you need to start to write some demo. To create a new project, type demo space create demo app and the name of your project. Click enter and you should get a confirmation that a project was created successfully. Now, in the next line, type demo studio, and that opens up Visual Studio that is specially configured to read and have you work with your demo project. Now, in this case, when you type demo studio, you will see that Visual Studio will open up, but the folder structure looks wrong. That is because we were not in the right folder. So this is one common mistake that a lot of new developers make, and that is to forget to CD into the name of the project, which is a folder. So CD into it and run Demo Studio again, and you should see the file structure that was created for you. There you go. Now in Visual Studio Code, if you open up the demo folder, you will see a .demo file. This is the demo file that you will be working with to write your smart contract. More on that later, I promise to take care of the Mac people so you Windows people can go. And the Mac people, let's talk Mac. Developing your demo project on the Mac is identical to Windows in the sense that we're gonna use Visual Studio Code. 
So go ahead and install Visual Studio Code. And then the next step that we have on the Mac is to set the paths just like we did for Windows. All the directions that we need to set up your Mac is found on the web page. The first thing we need to do is to run an echo shell command to find out what kind of shell you're using. If you do not know, it's either going to be bash or it's going to be Z shell. The following example, I'm going to use Z shell, but bash is perfectly fine. And the directions are all found in here for the two flavors. So in my case, I'm going to scroll down to the Z shell, or some of you may call it the Z shell and paste copy and paste this command. This will do two things. It will set the Java home variable and the path variable for the demo SDK. And yes, you're correct. We have not done the installation of the demo SDK quite yet, but we'll take care of it in these two lines. Now go back to your terminal and do a echo Java home and you realize that it's coming back blank. Uh oh, no worries. Fire up another terminal and you realize that it is really there that it has persisted. Fantastic. Now let's go back to our web page and proceed to the next step, which is to install the SDK. In this case, we're going to issue a curl command from the terminal. And if you were to do a demo version, you'll find nothing, which is correct because we have not installed demo. That's fine. And we're going to copy and paste this curl command and let it run. In the interest of time, I've accelerated the frames, but it should only take a few seconds. Now, once a uh, demo SDK is installed, you are ready, believe it or not. Now, let's start our new project by issuing a demo create demo app command followed by your project name like such. And go ahead. And this time I've learned from my previous uh, encounter to make sure I CD into my project folder before running demo studio. And if all goes well, type demo studio and Visual Studio should fire up with your project ready for you. So that's it. I am excited because in the next episode, we're going to go right into the code and you're going to be well on your way to developing your first demo app. Join me next time. See ya.